Okay, guys, Imperator here with another video relating to the Arma 3 Jets DLC. Now, I've had a few questions recently regarding flying the VTOLs and the changes that 1.70 patch brought to these aircraft. So, what I've done is I've actually created a scenario where the player is no weapons and no bad guys and simply given a series of landing zones to fly to to practice uh, their vertical takeoffs and landings. So we'll go ahead and board the aircraft, start the engines. Now the very first thing I do, as soon as I board one of the two VTOLs, is I turn auto vectoring off. The reason for this being is that I don't like giving control of the engine nozzles to the computer. So as you can see in the top left side of the HUD, there's a small airplane diagram with a 90 in it. That indicates that the engine nozzles are 90 degrees down. As we use the flaps up and flaps down keybinds, which are right control L and right control K respectively by default, we'll notice the engine nozzles change every time we click the button. And on the helmet mounted display, the number adjusts accordingly. So what we're going to do now is a vertical takeoff. So we'll rotate the nozzles down to 90 degrees. Start applying thrust. And at about 50% we'll start taking off. So we'll raise our gear. Now at this point the VTOL flies pretty much like a sluggish helicopter. We point nose down, goes forward, pull back, goes back, we can yaw, slowly, and then roll left and right. So, now that we're off the ground, we want to transition to horizontal flight. Now at this point, if I was to go from 90 degrees to 0 degrees, the speed I have would be insufficient to keep the aircraft off the ground and probably end up crashing. So, as we gain forward speed, we want to push the flaps up button. Again, that's right control L to start applying forward speed. And the faster you gain your speed, the quicker you can apply the flaps up key until it returns to zero, and you are now a very fancy airplane. So at this point I'll speed up again and we'll head to Wallace Airfield to practice landing. Now as you can see I've done the old Armour 3 shift click on the map for a waypoint. Now depending on your difficulties that may show up with an in-game UI element giving you an exact distance, but for those of us who play without that, the helmet mounted display now brings an arrow indicating where that waypoint is. So as we approach the airfield we want to start slowing down and using our air brake, which by default is X. we we'll notice the Xeon rapidly bleeding speed, and I'll lower our gear at this point, just so I don't forget later on. Now as our speed starts reducing, we're going to begin using the flaps down key to lower our nozzles. At this point it's very important to pay attention to the flight path indicator, which is the small circle with a line, and that indicates where your aircraft is going to be given your current control inputs. Basically tells you where you're going to land, and where you're going to fly to. Very useful for avoiding crashes. So we're also coming in, we've got our engines at about a 30 degree angle, and we're slowly bleeding off speed. So as we slow down, we start to apply the vectoring until we get to 90 degrees. And we slow down, still applying air brake to bleed off the forward speed, while nosing up like landing a helicopter to assist, and then Slowly touch down, like so. 
So what I'll do now is I'll conduct a typical takeoff, like a normal airplane, which the Xeon's more than capable of. Gears up. Now there is one very important piece of information to pay attention to when you're on your final approach. And I'm sure many players have noticed this. At a certain point and a certain speed, roughly 140 on the descent, your player will suddenly lose control and nose down immediately. I'll give you a demonstration while I put a bit of altitude to recover. So we'll throw our nozzles to 90 degrees and we'll attempt to come to a hover with the air brake on. Paying very close attention to what the nose of the aircraft does when my speed gets to 140. All of a sudden it noses down. It's very difficult to re recover from this, particularly at low altitudes. So a very minor, all it takes is 1% of thrust application and all of a sudden you regain control of the nose of the aircraft. Now obviously you'll still continue to descend because you're not applying enough thrust to maintain your altitude. So if we bump that up to about 50, you'll notice the flight path indicator has started crawling back up towards the horizon of the HUD. We continue to apply that. We'll essentially come towards a hover as we slow down our forward speed. Voila, we've gone back to airplane mode. So I'll quickly transition us back to forward flight and we'll apply throttle. And we'll pick another landing zone. So again, much like a helicopter, you have to prepare to slow down before you get to your landing zone. Now obviously we're travelling a lot faster, almost twice the speed of a normal helicopter's maximum speed. So we need to start our final descent a lot further out. So as I'm banking towards the landing zone, I've applied full air brake to bleed off some of that speed. Now that I've come to a rough cruising speed, I'll drop the air brake. So again, we're paying very close attention to what that little flight path indicator is doing. We'll bleed off some more speed and we'll drop the nozzles to 90 degrees. Put our gear down so we don't forget and watch that speed. And as it gets closer to 140, we start preparing for that nose drop. And there it is. Fly thrust, fan the aircraft, clear the aircraft like a helicopter, and bleed off that speed, and we're wheels on the ground. So now we'll apply takeoff thrust, 50% get us off the ground with the gear up, and we'll come to a steady hover. And as I start to rotate the nozzles forward, you'll notice the flight path indicator starts moving closer to the horizon. And as I gain speed and nose up, we can fully rotate the nozzles to zero degrees. So one last landing zone, something a bit uh, tighter and more difficult the approach, the helipad at Kamala. So again, bleed off the speed, we'll throw a shift click waypoint down, which you can see on my hub there. Start to uh, roll it in like an airplane, as the speed starts slowing down I'll take that air brake off. and direct us to 90 degrees throttle. Air brake back on to bleed off forward speed. Again, paying very, very important attention to our airspeed. At this point we'll go gear down. 
Might have shot the LZ a little bit. Come around. Get the throttle. Using that flight path indicator, we'll place it where we want to go on the helipad. And wheels down. So that's pretty much it. Again, I'll post a link to the Steam Workshop version of this mission so that you can have a chance to fly the Xeon VTOL around in a friendly environment. No one's going to shoot you down. Now, the differences between the Xeon and the Black Fish are pretty minor. Obviously, the Blackfish is significantly larger, so you need to take that into account when you're trying to fit it into small LZs, as well as the amount of thrust needed to be applied to keep the thing airborne. One major difference is that the Blackfish, because of its massive rotor blades, can't do a rolling takeoff. So, again, I'll post a link to the workshop in the description, as well as the default keybinds. So. Otherwise, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section and subscribe because I'll be doing a few more videos in the near future on the specific aircrafts in the Jet Steel Sea, as well as some of the older vanilla aircraft. So, thanks guys.